Our experience tells us that walking or biking against the wind is much tougher than with the wind in the back. Why is that? And how can we model the force that causes this? In today's lecture we will deal with the force due to the flow around an object. For example, we feel this force when air is flowing around us. There are plenty of examples for this drag force. A paratrooper uses a chute to slow down his fall. Here the air is from the perspective of the paratrooper flowing past him. The direction of the flow is upwards, resulting in an upward force. A second example is the wind blowing almost horizontally against a tree. Again, the tree feels a drag force from this wind. Similarly, a shark swimming in the ocean will experience a drag force opposing its motion. What does determine this force? Again, from experience we know velocity of the flow around the object. This may be due to the wind blowing around the object or the object moving through still air. It is the relative velocity between object and fluid that counts. The shape of the object is also important. The smaller the frontal area, the less drag. No wonder sports cars are so flat. Finally, the type of fluid matters. It is much easier walking through air than through water. One reason is that while moving the fluid has to go around the object and thus the mass of the fluid has to be displaced. Hence, we may expect that the density plays a role. Furthermore, it is much easier to move a spoon in a glass of water than in thick maple syrup. The quantity that describes this is the viscosity. Now we need to find out how all these parameters are connected and together form the drag force. To find this answer we will use dimensional analysis. For simplicity we will assume that we can describe the frontal area with a length d. You may think of this as the diameter. On the previous slide we saw that the drag force depends on four parameters. Again, diameter of the object d speed of the object V and two fluid parameters, density and viscosity, mu and rho. Note that we have given the velocity as subscript R from relative, as it is the relative velocity between the object and the fluid that is important. Furthermore, we give the density as subscript F from fluid, to remind us that it is the density of the fluid flowing around the object that is important not the density of the object itself. According to dimensional analysis, we write this as powers, with the four powers A, B, C and D not known yet. In the next step we write for each parameter its IS units down. For the force that is kilogram meters per second squared. For velocity, meter per second. For the diameter, meter. For the density, kilogram per meter cubed and finally for the viscosity kilogram per meter per second. Now it's our task to make the equation in the box dimensionally correct. Thus we write down three equations for four parameters A, B, C and D. We cannot solve this exactly as we have only three equations for four unknowns, but it doesn't matter. We can still express e.g. A, B and C in terms of D. When we do this we find from the first equation C equals 1 minus D. From the third one A equals T 2 minus D. If we combine this with the second equation we find B equals 2 minus D. OK. Now we can combine this with our initial expression for the drag force. Now group this as Fd over d squared times rho f times vr squared on the left side and everything that still has the unknown power d on the right side. The result is given on the sheet. We see that the drag force divided by some term that makes the left hand side dimensionless is now connected to a dimensionless parameter 
which we recognize as the Reynolds number. Actually, we do not mean that the drag force is connected to the parameter on the right side to some unknown power d. We know actually now that the dimensionless drag force is a function of the right hand side. Before we think about this function, let us first look at the left side of the equation. Here we see that the drag force is made dimensionless by d squared times rho fluid vr squared. Can we understand this? Yes, we can. We argued that the drag force is probably proportional to the frontal area of the object. That is reflected in d squared. It's a measure of the frontal area. We will write it, this as capital A with a subscript denoting perpendicular. The remaining part is rho f vr squared. What does that mean? If we look at the units, it has units of a pressure. Aha! Uh -huh. The denominator is area times pressure, indeed a force. Do you recognize rho f vr squared? What if we write it as half rho vr squared? That is the same term as in Bernoulli's law. It is the pressure head stemming from the kinetic energy of the liquid with respect to the object. We will write the denominator on the left thus as a perpendicular times half rho v squared. Let's go back to the drag equation. The right hand side contained the Reynolds number to some unknown power. Rather than the Reynolds number to some power d, the dimensional analysis tells us that the drag force is some unknown function of the Reynolds number. We can now write the drag force in terms of the frontal area, the pressure head and the unknown function. This is the general form of the drag force. The coefficient c sub d is called the drag coefficient. As we have seen, it is not a constant. It is a function of the Reynolds number based on the relative velocity. Now we have a general expression for the drag force. For a better understanding, we will look at two extreme cases. A flat plate perpendicular to the flow and the same flat plate but now aligned with the flow. In the perpendicular case, the plate is a real obstruction. The incoming fluid has to pass around it. This means that the incoming fluid with horizontal momentum has to be stopped and deflected in the vertical direction. Just in front of the plate, the pressure is high, stopping the incoming fluid and accelerating it sideways. At the back of the plate, the pressure tends to be low. This is the slipstream area that bikers and Formula One racers use. We see from the figure that there is a pressure difference across the plate. Thus, the plate feels a net force, pressure difference times plate area. To the right, the pressure difference can be estimated via Bernoulli's law. Delta P is about half rho v squared. If the plate is parallel to the flow, there is hardly any perpendicular area for the fluid to push on. Now, it's friction at the wall that drags the plate to the right. The fluid at the surface of the plate has the same velocity as the plate, whereas far away it has its original velocity. This velocity difference gives rise to a frictional force to the right and is connected to the shear stress in the fluid. Now the relation between the drag force and the fluid velocity is directly depending on the Reynolds number as well. In general, both form and shear drag are always both present and we use the modeling with the CD coefficient. It is important to remember that the velocity in the drag force is the relative velocity. As the sheet shows, it does not matter whether the fluid moves from left to right or the object from right to left. The drag force is the same. It's the relative velocity that counts. The drag force, like any other force, is a vector. It has direction. How do we put in our drag force equation this direction? By realizing that it's always working in the direction of the relative velocity, is as the fluid velocity minus object velocity. 
Note that the expression does not state that the drag force is proportional to V squared. The drag coefficient CD is depending on the Reynolds number and thus also on the velocity. We can see this by looking at the flow around a sphere at various velocity, or better, at various Reynolds numbers. In the first movie we will see a cylinder placed in a fluid. The fluid will start flowing from left to right and its motion is made visible by green dye. You see the fluid neatly flowing around the cylinder and at the back following the cylinder shape. This is flow at low Reynolds numbers. The fluid can still follow the shape of the object. In these cases it has been found that the drag force is proportional to the velocity to the power 1. In the second movie a ball is hanging in an airflow. The flow is again from left to right. Now we see that the flow overshoots the ball. It cannot follow the shape of the ball. In terms of physics it has too much momentum. As a consequence a wake is formed behind the ball. This is clearly seen in the movie. It is the same as can be seen behind pillars of bridges where all kind of stuff gets trapped. It's a region of low pressure. In the third movie we zoom in on the wake. It is again clear that the airflow around the sphere cannot follow the shape of the sphere on the backside. So, in summary, the drag force is proportional to the pressure head from Bernoulli's law based on the relative velocity. Also, it's proportional to the frontal area and finally a function of the Reynolds number which we call CD is in front of the expression. This drag coefficient reflects all the features we saw in the movies. For the time being this CD is an unknown and we cannot calculate the drag force yet. Therefore, in the next lecture we will concentrate on the drag coefficient and make sure we can put numbers to the drag force. For now, take a good look at the examples. You can also test yourself by making some exercises. Good luck and see you in the next lecture.